How's it going, everyone? It is Sunday, May 5th, and we are at our monthly trade review. So I'm going to review all of the picks that I gave in April. We're going to take a look at how we did and where we can improve. So before we get into the picks, I think it's important to set up some structure as to how this video is going to go. It is going to be longer because I gave, I don't know, 20-something picks. We're going to look at the D1 charts or the M5 charts, if applicable. We're going to look at the market D1, so uh, it will take a little bit of time to get through it. I hope you like royalty-free chill hop because you're going to get about an hour of that today. First thing I'm going to start off with is just the market recap, what happened in April, because that's going to set the context as to why we took certain trades and where potential mistakes are going to be. So that's the first thing I want to talk about. What happened in April? The second thing is how I'm going to discuss every trade. Generally, I'm going to discuss the trade in four parts. Part number one is going to be the setup. So how did the stock and the market look at the time I took the trade? Second part is the entry. When did I enter this trade and was this a good entry point? Three, what happened after I entered? Did it do what I expected? Did the stock move that I expected? Did the market move as I expected it to? And then three, exit. Why did I exit when I did? And was there any way to have improved that exit? So those are the four parts we're going to go look at. The second way that I've broken this down is I'm not exactly going to go chronologically as in every single day. I've broken out all my picks into the different strategies that I recommended. So some days I recommended more regular swings. Some days I recommended debit spreads. Some days I recommended day trades and uh, even some put credit spreads or I guess one put credit spread. And I recommended some earnings time spreads. So I did a couple of different recommendations. And what I'm really curious to see is if my recommendations tied in to what the market was doing at the time. So these, to put it into simple words, was I recommending longs when the market was going down? Or was I doing day trades during the right time? Or was I recommending swing trades when I really shouldn't have been recommending swing trades? That's kind of what I want to see. Did I choose the right strategy for the right market condition? Okay, so let's start with the market. What happened in April? And what I like to do sometimes is just, let's just look at the monthly chart. Okay, April, everything said and done, we went down. We started at 523, we closed at 502. So I guess maybe 524, closed at 522. So we dropped 22 bucks. That's what happened in April, all things said and done. Let's look at the weekly chart. Here's April again. You see we had three weeks of losses and then we got uh, a week of gains on the 22nd and then we had this bullish hammer. So there was some volatility here. So I view this again as a pullback in that longer term trend. And we had stopped some of the bleeding in the last two weeks of April, um, but definitely made it quite difficult to trade. There was more, it was really the first strong bearish reaction that we got since the end of October. You can see there's pro pretty much almost no week where we had a weak close, especially in the beginning of the rally. And then it started to wane a little bit here um, and over here. Now we can look at the daily chart and you get a little more detail about what happened. And the key that I saw in April was really this key red bar off the all-time high on a gap up if you look at what the market was doing beforehand it was kind of chopping around it was slowing down and i thought maybe we would get into some horizontal trading range but i did not expect to see a key red bar so that was i wouldn't say a fault but it's just a, maybe a learning opportunity that okay this is one scenario that can happen and again, I just always think back to this scenario here in July where we got this key red bar and then we got this weak move down. So that is definitely a scenario that can happen after a big rally and it usually singles, signals the end of the rally. So without even looking at my trades, I haven't, I haven't looked at them, but I don't, haven't quite tied them to the marketing editions. 
looking at this market and what happened here, if we take it day by day, I'm still keeping my regular strategies here. I'm going to be more balanced. I should be more balanced. I should be out of a lot of trades. It should be selling premium. And I should be day trading a little bit more. I should be keeping it passive at this point because we haven't quite gotten the breakout that we need. And so this part, again, we're pulling back here. We're kind of waffling around. We're doing fine. And then when I see this candle, this is when I should actually not take any more longs right? I should not take any more longs, but I also don't want to panic and take any shorts. So when I see this candle, that's what it tells me. I know we're going to get the bounce. So we get the bounce and you have this three day window to get out of a lot of your trades. And in fact, you even have probably five days, really, even if you miss here, you have another five day window to get out of your trades. You got a week to get out of your trades before the market cracks through. And you get this crack through on the 15th and here is when I would probably be taking some swing shorts. Market has some follow through and I would keep it pretty short term, either day, uh, day trade shorts or do some EDSs because we know we don't know when support's going to come in. So we're still probing here. I expect to test the 100 SMA. We get this gap up and we don't test it. So we're being pretty cautious right now. And then we get this move up higher. So I like this move, but I'm suspicious that we didn't test the 100 SMA. I'd probably take some swing longs at this point. This is the first close we got above the prior day high. We're above the 8 EMA. Got through some earning or got through some news. So we push up higher. Uh, this day is fine. This day is some drop from meta earnings, which isn't great, but we do have the higher low. We rallied up higher, which is good. So we're having this stair step pattern so far. Um, you know, two steps up, one step down, or three steps up, two steps down, whatever you want to call it. Inch up higher, hold the gains. FOMC drop, or sorry, uh, what is going on here? Th this was a this is a, tr a day before the FOMC. Sorry. So this put me on my heels because I would not expect, I thought buyers would have a little bit more control before the FOMC, which they did not. We got this big spike up, ended up being a slightly bearish day, but a little bit more bearish neutral, uh, but we didn't get any follow through. We tested that 500 level, rallied up, and then we closed right at the 50 day SMA and AV WebQ at this critical juncture. So this has been a kind of a weak move up. So want to do that play by play back. That's what I want. That's kind of want to see. There's certain pockets where you can take some shorter term swings on the short side and the long side. But I think the key theme of April was to stick to day trading. If you have earning time spreads in your toolkit, you're going to use those to get some money. If you have some put credit spreads, I think April 23rd is a good time to put on some put credit spreads. And you should be day trading a lot more like i said and not a lot of our regular swings that we had given out in the last couple of months there was a lot of times where we were ripe with getting into these swing trades and not as much excuse me not as much in the really after the first week of april all right so now that we have that let's talk about our picks so we're going to do our regular swings first. So these are the strategies that we've already done where we get excellent entry points. We usually sell into strength. Depending on the market conditions, you can target between a half an ATR move, a one ATR move, maybe even a 1.85 ATR move. Depends really what the market conditions are like. But we've done excellent with that strategy over here. Um, again, I don't think it's the... The, I think longer term swings are probably the best strategy on the best stocks to take advantage of this trend. But this is a really successful strategy in this condition. And the next time we get bullish trend conditions, I know I am going to do pretty dang well uh, with that strategy. But let's get right into the trade. So we go to Lulu here, Lulu on 4.1. So let's look at 4.1. Do a couple of lines here. So this is Lulu on 4.1. This is a post earnings breakdown. We're breaking out of this compression. Let's look at the market on 4.1. Market on 4.1 is kind of stalling over here. Um, so I like this the, the momentum of Lulu here. Blow out its SMAs. And we know that the market has found some resistance at the all-time high at this point. 
we can take some short-term swing trades. Oh, sorry, this was a PDS, my bad. This is not a regular swing, so I actually should put this in the PDS, PDS section, which is a mistake on my part. Okay, so we're gonna look at Lulu in a second. My bad about that. Uh, first real trade was Cat. That was a regular trade. So we took this on 4-3. Yep, here's Cat on 4-3. And here is the market on 4.3. Yep. So the market found support. My thesis at the time was we were finding some support here. We're going to test the top end of the range. Cat is a really strong stock. This had a nice little, you can see, cup and a handle. I don't really care. Just found support at the 8 EMA. Both the compression, nice high volume candle, key bar. Continue on upward. So market gapped up higher and we took profits on cat in that gap up and we got a nice uh, about 30 31% win on that so that was a pretty good trade um the next one we took was RTX and here's RTX we took it on 44 this had a really nice trend after this breakout hugging the 8 EMA pretty tight price action not a lot of red candles now when we took RTX, this stock did not, uh, the, the market had not sold off yet. So when I entered RTX, we had a gap up and we had held that gap up for probably about three to four hours at that point. And I liked that stock a lot. So market sold off. RTX really didn't flinch at all. This is like literally one of the most insane displays of relative strength that I've seen held up all the gains market went higher next day we added to rtx and i saw there there might have been some resistance at this level so i took some profits over there um and then you can see that really pretty much ignore the market so rtx did pretty well not a lot to go over there this is just a really nice d1 chart excellent relative strength we knew that there would be a bounce we added to that winner and we took some nice uh profits along the way Another trade I gave on 4.1 was Pan... Oh, sorry, not 4.1. 4.4 was Pan W. So I checked Pan W at 4.4. I liked the weakness in the stock. It had tested this level. Broke out of compression. Did not rally with the market. And then when the market started to sell off, Pan W also started to sell off. Now, after I took this trade, market rallied a little bit. Pen W, okay, did pretty well. It's hugging this level, not really doing anything too much. Uh, and then on the 8th, market's still fine, but Pen W really broke through support and we got a lot of short covering. So we broke out of this SMA and we got into the gap and we really filled that and we didn't quite reject it. That's when I had to take the L on Pen W. So let's look at this L a little more clearly. I think Cat and RTX were uh, executed pretty well is there anything we could have avoided in pan w so i think this setup was pretty decent like i do like the d1 chart it is a little bit choppy but i thought there'd be some follow-through what was happening with the market at this time the market had this big red candle but did we expect a sell-off and the question is well that's the question the answer is no we didn't expect an immediate sell-off because we knew that buyers would at least try to make another pass at this all-time high I didn't think we would stack red candles immediately. So even though Pan W was a decent pick, if I zoom into April 4th, so let's see if I can get into April 4th here. If we zoom into April 4th, I remember the M5 chart not having a ton of relative weakness, which is not the end of the world in my opinion, just because the market was selling off very strong. We have these huge, huge strong moves in the market it's really hard to find stocks with relative weakness the, the indicator is going to show relative strength because most stocks are not dropping with the market okay here is april 4th and we can see here this is a w had this double bottom, uh, tested this high here, broke through this low, really accelerated through, and then was still pretty weak with the market, 
but it just wasn't really able to get through support. If the market was weak, it should have been hugging this level a little bit more. Um, but yeah, this was really the warning sign, in my opinion, when it like the market's going down, this stock burst through all this levels, tested support, came back up through the gap, again through the gap. So it's just like, just this, this move was the reason that we exited the trade. If the stock was really weak, this move would have not happened. So, um, I, I like my exit. I think the setup was decent, but I don't think I really should have taken this trade because I felt like I panicked a little bit when I took this trade. I took one long and one short, but in reality, I should have RTX was fine because I took it before the drop it held up. And even if it didn't hold up, I would exit for a loss. I don't think I should have initiated any new trades after this move. And that was the mistake I did in Pan W. I panicked a little bit on this red bar when I should have just stick to the sidelines and seen what would happen. If the market ended up rallying and Pan W had some relative weakness, right? And let's say we actually held this level and then we tested up higher, then I would have kind of um, jumped the gun a little bit. So the mistake for Pan W is really the entry panicked entry on this red candle when i should have been day trading and then when i got this breakdown on the 15th then i could say hey is, how is pan w still holding up turns out it's not holding up as weak as some other stocks okay so we had pan w cop long i took cop long on the fifth um so this was nice I liked COP on the 5th. This was a pretty good setup for probably an overnight move. Um, I set an, an, on an LRSI M15 pullback. So I think we got that, but it hit this level and rejected pretty hard. It did end up being a winner on the 12th, but then you can see how much it kind of dropped down afterwards. So I do like the pick, but I don't think I should have given a swing trading pick on the fifth I should have given a day trading pick on the fifth the uncertainty is a little bit too high to give a good swing trading pick so that's the second mistake cop was a loser because we took the loss on that the next day uh, i think we entered somewhere here took the loss somewhere here if you should have been trading small size i like the the trend strength on that and if i had to swing any stock it would be this so it was a pretty good pick but i don't think the strategy for swinging matched the market conditions so uh, i took the loss on cop because i didn't i didn't quite respect the market enough on that trade next one has h a s took this on four eight four eight and then we got out so we took it on a pullback here uh, and we got that alert somewhere here and then we took profits near the high of the day on the next day. So that was a nice little win on the 8th. And look, it ended up working out. But again, you can't be too biased with your shorts from what I've recognized. I have to say, look, here's the setups I have based on market conditions. What's the best setup regardless of win or loss? And if I have the setup, then I should have more winners. If I sh if I say that this this L and Pen W was the wrong trade, I don't even think that HAS like HAS is a good swing pick. Like it's not the worst swing pick, but I should have given another day trade recommendation. I don't think I should have given a swing trading recommendation at this point on the eighth, right? I just you, I just really do not know what the market is going to do at this juncture. We don't know if we're going to continue up higher. We don't know if we're going to continue up lower. Um, I knew I kept the trade short term, which was good. So at least I kept it short term, but this really HAS should have been a no trade. Okay. So that was the last pick I did. Um, so on my regular swings, um, well, I, I oh, actually I'm three and three and two so far. I didn't give any more recommendations until 423 when I gave GE. So what happened at 423? This is 423. Okay. So this is a good entry point for some swings. 423 g had posted some earnings a little volatile but we took a small position it was looking pretty good um market continued up higher ge didn't really come down too much with the market um and you see how assessing the level and going up higher again 
So I think GE was a nice pick, pretty small pick. Um, we have a small starter size here. We got this move to produce how we wanted. And then if I held until the end of the week, I would say, look, the market didn't do quite what I wanted it, expected it to do. GE didn't do quite what I, I mean, it, it did well, but I don't have a lot of confidence. So you'd, I'd probably stick with the starter position. I'd keep it open at this point, but I wouldn't do anything crazy with this at this juncture until we get a breakout. If we get a breakout, then maybe I can add to GE. It is holding up pretty well. Um, so that is going to be an open position. I don't think I actually talked about it too much in my video. So that might have been a, a miss site on my part. But great entry with good time with the market. We had a market expectation which didn't produce. We had a stock expectation which did end up doing pretty well. And uh, you, you know, if you wanted to exit now, you could. You had some exit points. You didn't really have to take a ton of heat on this stock. Uh, very tight price action and very orderly price action. So uh, I'm going to count GE. I'm not. I'm just not really going to count it because I didn't talk about it in my videos. So I don't think it's fair to count it as a win or a loss it's just uh just kind of a mention i would say the other one i picked on the 23rd was goldman sachs excellent breakout over here we know it's a choppy stock beautifully timed with the market next two days market had a sell-off ge hold the gains pretty well market went up higher ge went up nice and high market pulled back for the next three days ge pulled back a little bit market went up higher for the next two days ge also went up higher for the next two days so this is perfect relative strength an example smaller pullbacks test the eight ema and then we surge up higher so again i'm not going to count this as a win i think we did take a ge cds which i'm going to call it at my debit spreads in a little bit took a ge cds or sorry gs cds not a ge cds pretty close in ticker symbol names uh, this was a good swing, but again, I'm not going to count it because I didn't quite talk about it. I mentioned in the video on 423, I didn't quite talk about it afterwards. So not for him, for me to compliment that this stock did exactly what it needed it to do for, and even if the market didn't quite do what we needed it to do. So if you wanted to take profits at the juncture, you could get back to the sidelines. If you feel confident in holding on to GS, wait for the breakout. See if that, if that move happens, then you can really add to that position. Okay, so those are our swings. Let's go over our debit spreads. So I'm gonna put my debit spreads over here. Okay, so first debit spread, which we had a teaser on, was our good friend, Lulu. So we took this one at 4-1, we took a PDS. So we're looking for a fairly short-term move and we, what i did like was that we did poke below this uh support level right here uh, we didn't blow through it which wasn't perhaps the best setup but it's a really weak stock nice post earnings weakness not rallying at all with the market and the market's finding some resistance here so the thesis is that the market is going to test the bottom end of the range lulu should be able to break out of the compression and that's exactly what happened we got a nice gap down took profits on the gap down market gap down uh, we know it may find support. Uh, we know we're not going to overstay our welcome too much. So this was a really nice setup, a really weak stock. We had a good plan. The stock did exactly what it needed it to do. And we took exits on the move lower. Now, Lulu did produce more, but that wasn't the bias of our trade. We didn't quite know what the market was. We were bullish, but we, we were mildly bullish at this point. So we didn't have the confidence to really stick with some short term swings as much as we could have next one that we took was an ulta eds on 415 now we took ulta right here yeah that's a beautiful breakout this is a textbook breakout you can ignore some of these horizontal lines uh perhaps was there some potential support that i said eh, this could be support but uh looks like it ended up being incorrect and sometimes it's good to redraw these lines, see when the support really came into play. Looks like that was the true support level. You can see how these prior support levels, the stock stops at them briefly, retests them, and then it makes its move. Um, so a strong trend will break through them, but you know that there's going to be some movement at these levels. So Ulta on 415. 
um a nice compression breakout oh yeah beautiful breakdown of the sma this is a beautiful uh setup for both the market and the stock we have a technical breakdown in the market i like the volume i like the separation from the 50 sma and i believe that we would have some follow-through uh and ulta was a super weak stock you can see this big uh long red candle here really weak post earnings had to digest some of these gains let the 8 ema catch up to it and then we got this another stage lower beautiful pick on ulta great sense great uh setup here with time with the market we had a good entry point what happened the move reduced we took profits on the open and we actually uh it ended up i think our bias was around the 427 level or something like that so i got my d1 resistance or support resistance wrong but i could have written down that price action until it started to stall out and also monitor the market price action at the time ulta gave us no reasons to exit the trade but the trade-off i had here was i took the small profits on the open but it also meant that on any losing stock i also had to take small profits on the open so that's going to come back to us in uh, a little bit but the clue here was that ulta gave us no reason to uh exit so i think exit wise we could have maybe stuck with it a little bit more i think i just didn't have a lot of market confidence i certainly had some stock confidence um the other thing i could have done if i had a more uh bearish bias or maybe maybe had a little bit more sticking power on this stock because we took it at the end of beginning of the week so we had some time for this to play out april 16th looks pretty good look at april 17th market made a new low of the day ulta kind of stopped here okay that's when you get out of the trade uh still have your nice profits at this level you never really take a lot of heat could it break down sure and looks like it poked a little bit over here but it took until the 19th for it to really break down in theory yeah you could say look i could have taken it here or run it down all the way to 413 right that's a nice 20 dollar move 1.5 atr move in the stock but that was not our thesis our thesis was we want to take a quick move in the stock get back to the sidelines we don't know how long this move is going to come if there's a bounce we don't know if ulta is going to get caught in that bounce we should not be caught in that bounce because we have some relative strength but how confident are you to really go against the market right we have to take the lessons that i learned or in this section over here with these strong stocks but then not the craziest not the best market conditions and apply them in this new scenario but overall i like the thesis on alta i like the thesis it went uh it went pretty well snap pds this uh ended up being quite a dangerous trade <laughs> but we took it here very bearish stock very bearish setup on the 15th again so beautiful market timing nice setup this is where the short-term pds worked out pretty well we got this move we took profits on the open and then it closed over here so you had to have taken the the scratch if you held it longer right so you can't it's hard to say should i hold snap short and then ulta long you, you don't quite know until the price action tells you in this case you, you would be rewarded if you took profits uh pretty close to the open on snap or pretty close to the low of the day if you had your target around you know 20 cents or something like that because then snap really just pushed i mean had earnings it's got sucked back in the range so you have to be careful that's a good example of here's your thesis you played it you got it out and you avoided the danger again we go back to ulta you'd have to really look at the m5 clues what was different in, in this day versus snap and would have been more profitable to take the scratch on snap but stay longer in ulta would have that would that been the better trade would you made more money in that scenario that's the tricky part when do you push it when do you not push it ulta was one that we could have pushed but we didn't because our both we i stuck to a get in get out mentality for both of these trades and that's why we were able to take profit on both alt and snap but avoid the loss on snap while giving up the longer term profits on ulta regardless though i like the uh setup on snap the thesis ended up being uh pretty prudent because we avoided this move and we had a good exit point because we sold in the strength we had our order out okay 
Coupang, Coupang CDS. So I took Coupang CDS on 416. So I took it here. Okay. What was the market doing on 416? Market was still selling off. Did we get above the priority high? We did not. Coupang was an excellent pick. Fantastic. Like if I had to go along any stock, I would have gone along the stock, but not the best pick for market conditions. So two things here. One, don't take this pick. Second, even if I did take this pick, see how it tested this level and then it actually uh, came up and went higher here. What did the market do? It made a new low of the day. What does this tell me? Coupon is very strong. Coupang, not coupon. Coupang is very strong. So if I'm doing a CDS against the longer term market, I mean, I got to get out at this point for a tiny win or a scratch because the market has not shown any signs of support. I'm trying to pick a bottom with this trade. The other option is I have to go way longer out. So April 16th, I take the May the May 16th calls, right? A small position. It's a cheap stock, small position. And I'm going to take some heat. I know coupons gonna, Coupang's going to hold it out. And I know I'm going to get that market bounce. So let's say you finally get that market bounce on the 23rd. And then look at that. Coupang, Coupang actually ends up producing higher. It just takes a while. Now we have earnings coming up. So even here, you take a small, you take a small win, but the CDS is not the strategy for that. So I made the mistake in I took the wrong strategy for the market condition, and my expectation of the stock didn't match the strategy. Let me summarize this again because I think I'm really summarizing this for my own sake. So I don't I don't lose money on on Coupang in the future. I took a CDS in a bearish market on a very bullish stock, which is not the highest probability trade. I, I, because my pick was so good, I could actually exit out for a very tiny win. I don't think I should have picked Coupang as a CDS in the first place. If I were to pick any stock, if I were to take Coupang, I should have picked calls. So that was the, that was learning experience on here. Really, it should not have been done. <laughs> okay, last CDS here, Goldman Sachs, which we talked about a little bit earlier. I took it on 426. Um, here is 426. You can see how the market, again, closed above the prior day high, filled in the gap of the EMA. Uh, GS, really strong stock, tested this level, went up higher. CES is a good play because we have major news coming out next week. So great setup, good entry point. Uh, we sold into strength. The stock did exactly what we did. The market moved up slightly higher. Uh, we got out for a nice win. So this was a high probability trade. We waited for the market opportunity to line up, and then we took the right strongest stock in the strongest stock of the pick to really uh, put our money into. So looking at the debit spreads, four and one. The main mistake was taking Coupang as a long when the market was going down. Just, I just shouldn't have taken that trade. These are That's just a mistake that I shouldn't avoid. I didn't quite put the market first. Okay. Um, we're going to go to the put credit spreads now. And I did on 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 418. So let's look at on 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 418. So this was on on. And then this was the market. Um, and this was a decent pick. It had some nice relative strength. But here's a tricky thing I learned with put credit spreads. Once the market takes off, you may be too far away to get the fill. So you have to front run a little bit to get that fill. And I got maybe a little bit lucky with that on on spread. But in my opinion, I would have really liked to take a PCS somewhere on the 23rd. Um, I would have just had a lot more confidence because at least we have some stoppage or at the very least the 22nd where we don't, we stop making a new low of the day. We actually make a new, we actually make a higher high and a higher low for the first time, right? Like some ounce of support. So I felt like I maybe like, I think this pick is going to work out, but I did learn quite a bit about when to time the PCS picks because the entry point is crucial and the trade management is also pretty interesting. I took some losses back on the May picks or sorry, the March picks on some put credit spreads. So um, 
I don't think, I mean, it might work out. I don't think I would take it again. I think I'd wait at least for a little bit of support. The bleeding has to stop before I take a PCS. Um, so I would have not ended up taking that trade on the 22nd. Um, I probably would have given a different pick. All right, so we've gone over the regular swings. We've gone over the debit spreads. Um, the earning time spreads quickly. It's hard to review because you have to have that data. If we just look at the outcome, it was... What, if you look back in the video, I'd mentioned why WDC was a good setup. And you can see what happened. It just didn't really move from close to open. And you got a very nice profit on WDC. And CLH is a different story. You can see how you had to get your money out right in the beginning. Otherwise, you would have taken pretty much the loss in the trade. So with my earnings time spreads, I'm really looking to make that decision in the open within the first few minutes. And I am really trying to pick the best of the best. So very low times it exceeds earnings and very high IV, IV differential. So don't take as many picks, but they're just as high quality, as high probability I can make them. All right, now let's go into our day trades. So first day trade, BA on 410. So let's look at 410. Okay, so I start giving some day trade picks here. Um, and this is good because now I'm actually having the right scenario. We're using the right uh, strategy for the right market scenario. We have uncertainty. We're just looking to trade relative strong or relatively weak stocks. B has a nice bearish trend. You can see had a little bit of a hammer there today. But uh, lots of momentum, lots of red candles, pretty orderly price action on a swing basis. I'm going to take a look at this on the M5 chart. So this is where it's going to take maybe a little bit more time in the video as I get back to the M5 chart, just have this guy load up. It would be pretty cool if they had a search functionality. I could search for... Here's BA410, four, four, and uh, I could get right to that date. I believe this is April 15th, 410. Okay, so let's go. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's see what a little bit here. Okay, 410. Nice. All right. Uh, I'm not going to... Uh, I should probably zoom back to the market as well on 410. I like this line, but I like to have all of the context. What's the price action, the 1OP, the gap, all that stuff. Okay, so here's market on 410. LPT sort of day. I wanted to remove the spy overlay because we don't need it if we have spy in the background. Okay, so let's move it over here so we can see... GE pretty, or not GE, this, the market pretty clearly. So uh, here's our first slew. Market is going higher. We had a gap down, testing the gap, couldn't quite get anything going. This is a pretty weak move. One OP bearish cross tells us that the cycle is coming. Doesn't quite get to it. We almost get a divergence here a little bit. Then we actually get the smackdown. Uh, here's it at 1050. So very weak stock, not moving at all with the market. Breakdown here, just don't love this long tail. So that's a, a bit of a warning sign. So that's probably why I didn't short earlier in the day, but you even take it something like right here, 11 o'clock. Here's the market at 11. We just closed through view app. Um, we have the bearish cycle producing. We know it's gonna be a two-sided move, but be, uh, be, I keep saying, <laughs> I keep saying these old tickers. Here is our M5 setup. Here's what the market looked like at the time. So I like the D1 pick. I like the context that it took on a shorter term market basis. I like the M5 market basis as well. First test did not rally with the market. Second test led the move down. New low of the day while market is closing below VWAP. So that's where I would take the stock. We have a one to be bullish cross pending. We want to see uh, BA just kind of hold the level, not really react to the market. Um, this is a, so far a range bound day. We're not going to get in anything really going here. And this means that we just have to be ready to take gains as soon as the move stalls. So we got this warning candle right here. Um, go down, test this low. We make a new low of the day. Okay, so we have a little bit of compression, but we're still back on track. So at 12.10, not worried at all. Market starts to rally here from 12.10 to 12.35. What's else going to be? B still does not care at all. 
perfect. We're still in the trade, not worried about BE. Not BE. <laughs> I think that's a bloom energy. Um, still looking good. Okay, so we got a little solo here at 1250. Still not worried about the solo until this gets smacked down. Now the solo produces. Okay, now that's a warning sign. We didn't want this to produce. This gains might be over. We got a strong trend or a pretty decent trend. Let's get a little double. Let's get a double bottom here. See if we can exit somewhere around like 73 or maybe 73, yeah, 72, 90, something like that. Comes down here. Oh, makes makes you low day. Okay, I like what I'm seeing here. Still back on track. No need to panic. Um, we got this long red candle, 101, 105. Uh, let's be a little cautious here. Okay, bearish engulfing hammer at 115. Uh, moving back up in the range, so we just trigger some sell stops. Again, range bound day. Is this move stalling? Ooh, we don't like that candle. We do not like that candle. This was a strong move down, an equally strong move up. This move is stalling. No net movement, right? No net movement from here. So now we're looking to get out of the, the trade. Um, it's going up and down. Just a lot of buyers and sellers fighting at this time. I think there might have been some FOMC news. I don't know. Um, 130, 135. Yeah, this is when I would exit the trade. I'm pretty sure this is when I exited the trade in um, in the actual trade. I joined a little bit late. Here's the entry point you enter in at 74.19. Closes. The little pops faded, pop faded, pop faded. This was all good. So right we're testing the 80 maybe we're running this move down when we get this another pop back up this happened pretty quickly pretty fast on good volume didn't know if we'd see the low of the day so i'd exit into strength here exit into strength here definitely get out by this point right you had all this time right here to get out of the trade ge is going flat the market is going flat you're no longer riding a trending stock you're out so that's how i trade ge i keep saying ge ba ignore if i said ge just ignore me BA. That's how we're trading BA short on that day. The stock did what we expected it to do. The market was in a range bound day. It didn't really produce. Had a slight bearish bias from the point of entry at 11 o'clock. Oh, friends calling me. At 11 o'clock all the way to 140. So took the strongest horse. We got out of the trade and uh, that day trading had us avoid quite a bit of reversal in the stock. Now, you could have ended up trading the stock when you low, when you low, when you low, continue on downwards, looking pretty good. So yeah, BA, everything was went great on that stock. Good setup, good entry, did what I expected, and we exited when the stock lost steam because the market M5 bias was, bare, was uh, neutral, and we needed to get out when the stock lost its steam. Okay, Google day trading long. Let's take a look at this stock. And let's look at this on an M5 chart. So we took this on the 11th. So this was a nice move on Google. Google is definitely one of the stronger stocks at this point on the 11th. I should really have a different time uh, in the market. So let's just open up a new window because I don't want to have to get rid of um, this M5 window. Where is the market on the 11th? Here's the market on the 11th. Okay, so new above the prior day high, we're making some moves up. Market tests the low earlier in the day, establishes support at the prior day low, and we get a pretty nice move up here. We have compressed at the high of the day during the bear cycle, and then this bullish cross, I mean, this one up be nails this move. We move up higher. But nine, an even divergent bear cycle. Boom, nail this move higher. Nice trend strength and be compressed near the high of the day for the rest of the day. So market context was a bullish, we had a nice bullish reversal. Google was leading the charge up. And if I had to bet, Google probably didn't drop in that first market move. So we're gonna go all the way back to April 11th. certainly some news here some news some news some news some news okay yeah this is what we love to see google long read candle in the open above close to that prior day high test the range establish support make a new move higher and then here's the market breakout at one what's google doing at one yeah it's looking pretty good 
Um, it didn't lose, it didn't quite get its, its relative strength. But really where I would trade is something maybe here-ish, 11.35. When the market gets above view app, starts to close higher and we get something going. Um, this was a strong move down and this was a weak and tenuous move up, but it lasted pretty long and really bears couldn't get anything going here. So when we started to get some lift off, I think 1150, 12, 1145, somewhere here is what that's when I would take my entry. So I like the setup. I like the entry. Let's say you took it at 1150, right? Stock closed. It made a new high of the day, took it at 1150. The market at 1150. Uh, was poised right here. It's grinding up higher. Um, pretty steady ground. We have a bearish cycle. So uh, maybe you'd probably wait out the bearish cycle a little bit. We're going to put on a starter position. Um, and Google ended up just grinding higher the whole day. So I would enter around here or even let's say you let's say you enter late, right? Let's say you enter at the break. You want to be absolutely sure you enter Google at 115. You want to be extra sure that this is going to hold right at 115. Market moves up higher, um, kind of pitter patters out. Google enters at 115. You got this bearish hammer. You're just waiting to see if we move up higher, which we do. So this was just kind of a weird uh, solo, I would say. Google's losing a little bit of luster here. Some decent trend strength. Let's see if it really reverses. We're moving back up. Um, yeah, this is when I'd probably take profits on Google at 340. Uh, market's pretty dead. It's losing some steam. Google had a pretty decent pullback. It's late in the day. Let's take some profits on Google. So you get in at 115 at 158.76. You get out here at 345, 159.54. Uh, about a 75 cent, 75 cent move on a, a stock like Google is pretty pretty dang nice if the stock ended up retracing all the way past your entry point late in the day take the scratch move on um you know you're you're good it happened it will not happen often but it may happen occasionally okay next day we have a bearish trend day and we took adobe short as a day trade so first let's start with the d1 chart Adobe short on the 12th. So here's the 12th. I like this D1, very weak chart. Uh, broke through some compression, running this 8 EMA. Uh, decently orderly price action. I just love this breakdown of compression, this retest of this level, and then this move down lower earlier in the day. If we look at SPY on the D1 chart, yep, here's a 12th, so a bearish day. We are below the prior day low. We're testing uh, close to the 50 SMA, so good day to take day trading shorts. The D1 context is looking good. M5 context is also supporting that. So let's look at Adobe on the M5 level. Almost forgot some chill hop was playing in the background. Okay, here is our good friend, uh, Mr. Adobe and their amazing photo editing AI technology. Okay. Uh, clues. What were the clues? Bounce up early. In the, we don't really get into the gap. We break through here. We break through here. Test this level in the market. So one of the first clues, I think here is probably the safe entry at 1035. Here's a little bit more of a risky entry. Not a risky, a little bit more risky entry at uh, 1005. You want to see this hold. Um, when it starts to go down, yeah, I like this 1025 entry. I think that's pretty golden. So here is, yeah, Google at 1025. We got this solo, which wasn't the best, but certainly a very weak stock. Did not respond at all to the market. So this is a pretty nice shorting opportunity. And if you want to be extra safe, take it at the low of the day. Okay, let's say you take it at 1030, right? Here at 4183. So let's say we take it at 1030, first hour of the day. This is a nice move. Um, we got this bullish cycle, but uh, not super worried about that. The price action tells us that we can be a little more bearish. We test the prior day low. We're watching to see what the bounce here is looking like. So we get this bullish hammer at 1050. Let's look at what Google is doing at 1050. Pretty ignorant of the market. We get this nice pop up. Okay. I mean, we got this pop up before. Let's see if it gets faded. So here's the pop up at 11. 
uh, rallies up a little bit. Um, and then we get some mixed candles here. Okay, so this move is kind of dying out a little bit at 11.50. What's the market doing? Uh, market had a decently strong move at 11.50. Here is the market uh, at that time. So got to VWAP. Google quite didn't get to VWAP. It bounced a little bit. And now we get the LRSI cross. I'd wait for a flat bottom HA candle here. It's really something, get something going. So I like this 12. Yeah, here's the entry I like here at 12.10. We get the LRSI cross, we get the flap on MHA, we're closing below VWAP. Uh, I like adding to the trade at this point. Tested this breakout level, so we didn't take too much heat on the trade. And now we're getting ready for this next leg lower. So now market makes a new leg lower, uh, which is really nice. This is a nice move down, 1240. Let's we'll see, look at Google here. Uh, it's moving down, but it's not really moving down as strong as the market. We expected a much stronger move. There's some buyers here. There's certainly some buyers at this level. Um, so let's look at the stock. Here's the stock at one. Here is the market at one. Yeah, market's kind of stalling a little bit. Now we got the bullish cross pending. One, 110, 115. Yeah, 115. Google rallies a little bit. So I probably would have been out of the trade at this point. We got this move down. It is exhausted, but this stock didn't really rally with the market. And, you know, looks like there's just not a lot of trend strength. It's a bearish trend day. I can probably find better picks. So you'd enter here, 41.83. Add here, 41, 470. I can't even speak. 471.83, we add. Or we, we enter, start a position. Add here, 12.10. Uh, 471.37, stock, market bounced, stock did not bounce. Exit right here, 469.80. Google did not pass this test, lost relative strength. In the day market uh, is bearish we have this below one to p cross let's get a better stock going and um looks like we avoided a pretty big reversal on adobe intraday on your initial position um even if you had this big move here you could have probably taken a small loss in the stock from here all the way to here somewhere here right around view app take the small loss get out of the trade or even here, um, this is a strong move. Now, Google, uh, Adobe eventually ended up going down, but it definitely took it some time. So, Adobe short, um, we had a good setup. That was a good entry point. The stock did what it did initially, but then it lost its relative strength. And so we exited because we did no longer had that cushion. Um, we knew that there was some buyers here. We got a tall bounce and uh, it's just, um, you know, they're better picks. They're better picks, right? We want to be in the best picks that we can. When the stock doesn't pass a lot of tests, you could either, and look, you don't even have to exit out of all the trade. You can even do a partial exit if you really wanted it to. Take some money um, and then wait to see if Google regains its strength. But I would definitely take some, of, some money out of the trade. Um, and you can see if the stock regains its footing on a bearish trend day. Because it didn't regain its footing, you take some small profits and you could even have your stop at scratch. So if it breaks through that level, you're out of the trade and you take a small win, but you don't really give up anything too much on the downside. Next, long here. So first three wins so far, uh, UAL, UAL on 417. Dow, oh, this was a beauty, absolute beauty of a trade. Post earnings breakout, um, bullish channel, wide bullish channel. We tested the top of the range. And to me, this bullish channel is important. It should be respected. But if there was any time that a bullish channel would break, it's going to be on a post earnings move. There's so much news and volume on this stock that it does not give any shits about the technical level. And you can see that's exactly what happened. This is the catalyst that rolled through the channel. Now, we are holding the level. We're digesting all the gains here. 8 EMA is caught up. Found support A, V, U, F, E. This could be a nice short later. I have an alert set at that level. Here's some horizontal resistance that's come into play that the stock has temporarily found some resistance and some supply coming in. But really nice setup for a day trade. Let's look at SPY on the D1 on 417. 417. Yeah, bearish trend day. Why am I giving a bullish pick on a bearish trend day? So let's look at what SPY did on the 17th. So if we look at the market, the market has been selling off here. 
Uh, I think we had, I, I believe that there was some support at this level. So I was really resting the market support, but on a short-term D1 basis, I was bearish on a long-term, on an on a intraday basis. This is also fairly bearish, but pretty weakly bearish, right? My bias was maybe like a minus one intraday on this kind of thing. Not the, not the most bearish price action. There's so many wicks and tails. There's so many mixed candles. Big move up, tall bounce, big move up, tall bounce. Sellers have a weak amount of control. So that's the sort of, sort of day we were seeing. If I look at UAL, um, what I've seen in my observation is that when you have a really weak bear trend like this, you can take really strong picks, like the best long picks. That's what you can take, and they can still be ignorant of the market. So let's look at UAL on 417, and let's just look at how ignorant it was at the market at that time. The key to this ignorance is that earnings catalyst. There's so much price action, or not miss so much price action. There's so much volume and um, just institutions are so active, right? Like they just do not care. Okay, so here's 417. First, let's just look at this volume. This is really heavy volume. This is really, really heavy volume. It broke through all the levels. Uh, ignore this SMA line because that's the current level. Gap and go when the market gapped up and went down held all of the gains and I entered UAL at 1020. So setup wise, I was thinking, look, this is a pretty weak bearish trend at 1020. We filled in the gap. We have a bullish one OP cross. Let's see if the cycle produces. I have a starter position on. I'm not too worried. Stock pulls back a little bit, has to test this level and we get the next, really the next leg of the cycle around 11. That's when it's starting. If I look at the market here, the market at 11, um, yeah, I mean, look, it's moved down, got a long red candle, got a bearish cycle coming in, but UAL has held the line, it's passed the test, so I'm not going to add to this position, but it has so much volume that it's it's been ignoring the market, right? So I can stick with this position as long as it continues to completely ignore what the market is doing. Okay, market makes a new low of the day at 11.30. UAL makes a new high of the day. It like does not care. Look at this. Just compressing. We got some long red candles over here. We got some nice volume. Um, market compresses a little bit at 11.35. As soon as the market compresses, as soon as the market compresses, what does UAL do? I mean, it's going up, right? This is the best example of relative strength you can find on this day. Market makes a second leg lower. 12 to 12.05. What does UAL do? 12 to 12.05, flat, long red candle, green candle. Another leg lower, 12.45. UAL, flat, completely flat. The market has been moving lower. This stock has been trucking higher, right? From my entry point, I, if I went long at the market at 10.20, 5.04, close i mean i'm down i'm down almost about a percent i'm down 40 s p points if i take that trade if i enter the same trade here at 10 20 i'm up i'm up almost a dollar on a 47 dollar stock that is insane okay market gets a bounce here we're finally seeing a pretty tall bounce now ual okay here's where we expected to take off a little bit dips a little bit Let's test another leg of support. And now we really get this nice leg higher we're actually testing the top of this range so i was a little bit more careful um, if I took some profits here, so that's where I exited the trade. I think it was a pretty decent exit. I would have waited to see what the bounce is like because this is a long move, but it's a weak move. We're going to get a bounce. That's what I should have known. So my mistake was not having the correct market bias here. We finally get this bounce in the market. It's testing up higher. I don't expect this to be a bullish reversal. It's really late in the day. We've been have heavy, heavy selling for about four hours. Get this all moved to view app. This is where I expect to find some resistance. It's two o'clock. Okay. Oops. Here's two o'clock. Yep. Two o'clock here. So this again, stock has been grinding up higher. Maybe I could take some exits, but again, it's just been really ignorant of the market. It's really just marching to the beat of its own drum. Stock moves down higher. We get this pop up. Okay, this is a nice pop up. Let's see if it holds. Does not hold. Uh, UAL doesn't really care about this pop up at all. Still grinding higher. 255 market is selling off. 
Is UAL selling off? Nope, it's not selling off. Just continues to grind higher. It's 3.30 now. Market finally gets a little bit of support. Uh, UAL flatlining here. Yeah, that's where I'm going to take profits. So I don't know if I would really... I'd maybe add to the trade on this bounce somewhere, perhaps at 105, uh, maybe 125. I would add to the bounce. Maybe one add given that it's a bearish trend day, but I'm really sticking with this position all the way to the end of the day. Right, look at this. Completely ignore the market. So... This is the only type of long I would take on a deal like this. We have a catalyst, we have the volume, we have the price action. The stock passed every single test of the market. Every single test. Every time the market went down, it was flat or moving higher. When the market found support, the stock went up. When the market went down, the stock was flat. As soon as the market stalled, the stock would continue to go up. Every single test was passed. That's how I look at the trade. So that was really one of my uh, favorite picks. It just illustrated this relative strength edge so well. All right, UAL, another win. Next day, we had uh, DFS. So let's look at DFS on the 18th. Okay, so we took DFS. Um, this was a pretty decent move. Most earnings, clear skies, nice little bullish flag. It had some, a little bit of gap uh, resistance right here. Looks like that gap, that came into play. So we had some, some gap stuff coming up over here uh, and then some D1 resistance at that level. If I look at the spy chart on the 18th, um, let's see, 18th, yeah, bearish reversal day. Um, so we said, look, if we find a really great stock, we can take a day trade long, but it's got to pass every test, right? UAL passed every test. Let's see if DFS passed every test. Uh, short answer and spoiler is no, did not pass every test. So. Already the D1 market context is against us. The D1 M5 context is against us. Here is the 18th. And then here is the 18th. So DFS is moving up with the market. I liked how initially in the day it didn't quite drop with the market. I also like this test of support where we went move up higher, move up higher, and then we got the breakout. So I'd have to enter 1025 or 1030. Um, for that entry, I think I took it over here at 11:20, which is literally the high of the day. So, the setup was not; it was a is was a decent pick. It wasn't the worst pick. We had good volume. Um, we had some pretty decent price action, but my entry was very poor. And the reason my entry was very poor is because the stock came up higher, went parabolic, came up higher, went parabolic. The stock hit this 504 level. And it didn't quite clear this level, which was resistance at this time. And it was significant resistance because there was a lot of volume at that time. So we got this rejection at that level and the market just tanked. So DFS also tanked with the market. Now it's holding up decently well. It's not holding up the worst. Now we got this bullish cross here. So this is the time where DFS needs to produce at 1215. So we have this bad entry here at 1120. 12.15, okay, here's a time now where we got to get something going. Uh, we don't really get anything going. Got all these mixed candles. It's 12.40. Um, it's holding up pretty well, but this market bias is not great. We didn't get a strong reaction here, and this stock is slightly strong to the market. It's not passing the test with flying colors. And given this move here, I don't know if DFS is going to get back to my entry point. That's the real question you got to ask. If I entered here, is there anything that the, is the market giving me any bullish signs? Is the stock giving me any bullish signs? It's not. So, I mean, I'd probably take the loss given that bad entry. Now, 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 now. If you took DS, DFS at a better entry point at 1030, immediate price cushion. Earlier in the day, the range hasn't quite been established yet. Here's also this market at 1030. Bullish cycle, new high of the day. Okay, DFS, hey new high of the day nice relative strength good volume price action is a little bit choppy uh we got immediate follow through we have cushion immediate follow through we have cushion and now we can watch the price action with some cushion at that time at 11 20. so we're, we have this warning candle over here we get this double top can't quite anything can't quite get anything going and then we get the break at 11 20. okay move pull back down we know that the trend strength is still strong and we have cushion see how the cushion has really changed our trade we don't take any immediate heat 
And then we evaluate the price action at 1140, 1145. Um, you know, this is getting pretty reversal heavy at 1245. Um, it's holding up well, but look, how long is it going to hold up, right? How, how, how weak? Look, that's the market move. What's DFS going to do? Yeah. So if you're lucky and you had a good entry point, you get out for a scratch on a very late move. If you play it safe, you could have gotten out for a tiny win. DFS, decent pick. Not the best pick, not the worst pick. Poor entry. Good exit. The entry is what screwed us over for this L. And if I if I got on the if I saw this move after 1030, I should have waited for an L RSI cross. If I got one over here, I don't think I would have traded it. But even if you would have traded it, you would have gotten at a far better entry price. I mean, you're getting in at the same price on this L RSI cross, right? Enter here at 1030, 124. L RSI cross triggers around 124. You're getting in at the same price. Holding VWAP, good relative strength. Um, market just a little bit too weak, and then it just dies on a vine um, for the rest of the day, and so does DFS. So you exit for a scratch, right? So if I get on the LRSI cross, I avoid the damage, get on a good price, and then I can uh, not take the L. So DFS, bad entry. That's why we took the loss. Okay, we have four more trades to get going here. Um, we have Qualcomm. Uh, Qualcomm day trade short on 419. So here's 419. It's a nice move from Qualcomm. Double top, blows through the 50 SMA, the AVUF E. Um, I don't have I didn't have this line drawn quite yet. Nice breakdown, room to support, clear skies. Like that for a D1 pick. Let's look at the market on the 19th. Yeah, bearish, uh, bearish day for sure. So looking pretty good, looking pretty good. Now we gotta look at Qualcomm on an M5 basis. And I said, if SPY gets below 497.37, which it did, so yeah, 11.55, 12 is probably when that short starts to take a hold here. April 19th. Okay, okay, here is Qualcomm. Oh, yeah. Um, so nice bearish action, and it looks like these three bars really set the tone for the day from 11.05 to 11.20. Um, this is what the market was doing. Fairly choppy, but we had to get through some support here because the SPY was at a gap fill. So when SPY broke through the gap fill, Yeah, Spire broke through the gap fell over here. 12.05, let's say you take it at 12.05. Okay, so 12.05, really weak stock and has not been able to get off the deck. Spies confirmed with a gap fell. Pretty good stock. Um, may see a little bit of a bounce, but um, I like the pick. It's not my favorite pick, to be honest. It's like, it's a good pick, not the best pick. Um, I think the entry wise is also decent. Uh, market wise, it's a good entry. Stock wise, I would have liked to get it somewhere like here, 1115 or maybe even 1120, or even somewhere like 1150 or 1155 because you have these little compressions to test and then you're starting, you're getting into the move kind of when it's fresh. You're, it's kind of made us move. I, it feels a little bit chasey to me. So, okay setup, okay entry. Uh, market produced, stock produced, uh, holding its own a little bit at 12.55. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Gain a lot of relative strength. Market starting to find some support. Stock running up. Yeah, I'm out of this trade at this point. I'm out of this trade. I got no cushion. No cushion at all on this trade. So uh, you take a small win, you get to the sidelines. Now, had a pretty big bounce. So market also had a tall bounce. You can see how much it lost its relative strength. Uh, eventually ended up making a new low of the day. I could have avoided all this heat, right? You take a tiny win. Um, and even even when it makes a new low of the day, it's like just not the strongest stock. So I don't think QCOM was really the best pick. 
Um, you have to have excellent trade management skills to really get out of this trade unscathed. I think it would be, be quite easy if you're especially new to trading to get scared on this bounce. And it's because the pick was okay, the entry was okay. That's why. That's really why it, it didn't do quite well. The other thing we had to be careful of was we knew that there was a high chance of reversal. Um, Marco was pretty close to the SM100. We thought we'd get the test. So you you could also, if you had a bias that we could get a reversal, you could take gains as soon as the strength stalled. So it could have really be something like a like a 10 minute trade. You get in at 158.11, you get out at 157.75, like a scalp essentially. But that's not what we usually do. Yeah, not not the best thing of Qualcomm. We got the win, but not not crazy about it, to be perfectly honest. I think that's one that we could have just uh, not traded at all. All right, 23 uh, spot day trade. Okay, so here's the market of the 23rd. Nice M5 price action. Let's look at spot. I know, I remember this trade quite well. On the 23rd, we have a post earnings breakout testing this all time high. I like the setup quite a bit. D1, if we look at the market on the 23rd, you can see this is also when we took some entry points on our swing long. So nice time to go long, both on the day trading and the swing trading side. We're gonna go back to spot on the 23rd. Um, and I knew I already knew that coming in that look spot has a lot of volume has some decently orderly price action It's been inching up higher uh, This stock is gonna march to the beat of its own drum. So I Have some market tailwind in my favor Gap and go kind of compress and had this chop and move higher for the rest of the day more difficult day to trade a lot of stocks don't have a lot of uh, hard to find relative strength and you don't want to want to trade from the downside because you're going to trade against that longer term market trend. You got to find a really weak stock in order to do that. Um, so we need to find a stock that's going to kind of do its own thing. So I liked spot. I took it here at 1205 on this break of the high of the day. Uh, this stock pull back, pull back, breaking out. And what was the market doing at 1205? Okay, I liked what I'm seeing here. Bullish cycle produced, bearish cycle pretty benign here. We've gone through um, about an hour of this bear cycle, not really produced. Got this double bottom, close of the eight EMA, 1205. I like that, I like this I like this entry quite a bit. Good setup, good entry. What happened? Um, I didn't like this retest. When I get these breaks, this compression, so here's, here's really, I see this as the resistance level intraday, right? When we get a break through this level, this compression, I like how we are flushing out these profit takers and these top pickers. I like to see move immediately on this kind of setup. I want to see move between one to three bars. We didn't get it. We got this move higher. First warning sign, not crazy about it. Market is inching up higher um, at 105. And this move, this stock is not really doing anything much. It's kind of grinding higher. So I get out... Um, Let's see, 1205. Did I have an hour? Yeah, I gave it an hour. This stock did not really produce in an hour. So I would have taken the scratch on this. This was a great entry point. It didn't do what it needed it to do. We had the time stop out, didn't go with the market. And um, we didn't get that flush upwards that I liked. Um, and I'll, I'll, I may give an example of that, a counter example of that pretty soon uh, with Baba. But I want to see that flush upwards and we didn't quite get that or that squeeze upwards i should say so i ended up taking the loss uh right here as soon as this uh red candle failed took the loss on spot so my exit was pretty decent not the not the worst exit not the best exit the time stop exit would have been the best because it didn't align with my trade expectations i'm gonna give an example of what i think should happen and we're gonna go to baba here uh, this was, oh, that was, that was a nice trending day. I remember that day. Here's what I expected it to happen. Here's Baba. Gap up, compression, test the bid. Get above this high. And break through this level. Produced instantly. See how that we produced? One, two, three, four. Couple of bars. We moved 
very, very quickly away from price and we had a cushion. And then when the move stalled, we get out of the trade. This is what should have happened in spot, but it didn't. And when I saw that, that was my cue to be careful. All right. So, but spot, that's the one I would take again. Uh, that's a good setup. Okay. SYF. Oh, actually, SYF, another great example on the 24th. Um, perfect example of what I get, what should have happened for spot. Let's go to the 24th. Long move here. We got this pullback absorbed all the uh the supply and then we started to inch higher again we get this breakout to the new high of the day and you can even enter someone here kind of front running let's take a look at the market on the 24th market pretty weak 1250 market gains some support pretty weak bearish cycle here started to get some lift off at around 115 um, and this is a perfect entry point. I mean, 115 is a beautiful entry point on SYF. Grinding up higher. Price action has been pretty orderly. Watch for the high of the day. If we break that, then you would add to the trade. Stock or the market ended up having a quite a nice move on the 24th. And uh, let me look at the D1 context before I forget. Yeah, 24th, uh, not the strongest day in the market, but there's certainly picks as we can see. SYF post earnings breakout is going to move under its own power. Broke through the high of the day, confirmed the breakout. We got this little bearish hammer. Okay, be careful. And we don't care about that. So um, I would have added to the trade here, but probably even added to the trade here at 155. Um, pulls back here. So we pull, get a pullback from two o'clock to three. So SYF like, does not care about this pullback. Oh, yeah, does not give any shits about this pullback two to three look at that look at that move on syf so now we pass another test um i'd probably add on some sort of ha reversal um now it's not really moving up too much with the market here's the market at 325 here is syf okay 325 pretty decent uh double top here and then we start to pull back so here's when i would get out of the trade uh getting pretty late in the day 330 but i i think i called out the trade somewhere here and then I took the scratch somewhere here. So this was a good pick. By the time I called it out in the video, the entry was just too late. The stock had already made its move. There's just not a lot of upside left. It's late in the day. The scratch was a good exit and a good call given what the stock and the market was doing. The real miss here was just the entry point. Um, should have taken it here. Or if you want to be more safe, should have taken it over here. Okay, last day trade, DLTR short on the 29th. Um, 29th, 29th, 29th. Oh, yeah. Okay, that is a nice setup on DLTR. Really, really weak chart. Let's look at SPY on the 29th. Here is SPY on the 29th. Okay, so mark it a little bit up for that day on the D1 chart. And yeah, LPT sort of day. You can take trades on both sides. Slight bearish bias. You can see that we have these lower highs and uh, some slightly lower lows here. So we've got some bias towards breaking to the downside of that channel. DLTR is an excellent short on the D1 chart. Let's take a look at DLTR on the M5 chart. Okay, so this is another setup that I like. You can see this long parabolic move compressed and then broke through this low of the day uh, right around here. Here's one low. Um, I think I'd like to see it clear, maybe clear that level, but um, really this level is what I like to see close below. So you can maybe take it here. Uh, definitely take it at 1230. Test this level, came all the way down, poked below, and then we got a pretty strong move up. And when this green candle didn't fail, that's when you take the scratch on that trade. I took the small win, I took it over here. So I got in at here and I got out at right over here. So it took maybe 30 cents. Because if you know what these compression breaks, we shouldn't get a very strong move back. We really should not. And that tells me that something else is coming the way there are buyers coming in from somewhere and it turns out we actually hit some d1 resistance on dltr so it was a good setup 
was a pretty good setup M5, but let's see where it stopped over here. Uh, stopped right at the top of this range. And if we go to our volume vision, you can see that there's a lot of, certainly quite a bit of volume coming in uh, around this level. So buyers at this point are probably stepping in and that gave a little bit pop in the stock. If you're swing trading it, I wouldn't be too worried. It's still intact on a D1 basis, but if you're day trading it, those D1 levels can cause these intraday reversals. So um, make sure you know your levels. I saw this on the chart. I actually thought this was the level on the bottom. And wh when I saw it react, I looked back in the chart and said, well, maybe that could be the level. And if I wasn't sure if that's a D1 level or not, I'm like, let me just get out of the trade, play it safe. If it is, if it's wrong, if I'm wrong, and if I'm right and it is a level, then I avoid a huge mistake. If I'm wrong and it ends up not being a level, I lose it on, I can kind of get back in the trade um, and still do well. But I was uncertain because there's a D1 level and it can cause that resistance. Oh, gotta adjust this slightly here. Okay. That was DLTR. So, um, good setup. Um, good entry. Assuming I got the D1 level wrong. So, that's kind of the mistake in the setup, but sometimes it's going to happen. So, I'm not too upset with that. What I'm really proud of was the trade management and making the right call based on the new information uh, or the information that I had missed. So, it didn't do what it, the stock didn't do what I intended it to do but I made the right exit. So not too mad about DLTR. It just tells me that, you know, keep an eye on these levels uh, in the future. Just make sure you're, you're good with those. So that is all the trades. Let's take a look at a high level summary because we covered quite a bit of stuff and uh, I'll put a timestamp to this in the video description. So it's a little bit easier to trade. I'm looking at the time right now. We're at an hour 20. So <laughs> definitely quite a bit of review but uh that's what you got to do you got to see all the trades here what went well what went pretty well some of the themes i noticed i did a pretty good job of not of matching the right strategy to the right market conditions and when i didn't do a great job of that is when i took the loss so if i look at pan w short and cop long those are pretty decent those are pretty good d1 charts they're not like i had good picks they didn't produce and I really shouldn't have taken the swing trades because I had high uncertainty in the market. So those were two losses that were avoided by just not by trading, do by giving a day trade pick instead of a swing trade pick. Because of doing these videos, I have to give a pick. Um, but in some of my trades, in some of my days, I don't even take a trade because I'm like, I, I just don't see anything great in the market right now. Um, and so if I look at the, the trades I took, the swings I picked from uh, four, 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 five, and four, eight. I was two. I was one win, two losses, and my losses definitely made up more than my wins. So, um, giving up the swing trades for those days would have been more profitable. Okay. Second thing, PDSs. Same thing with Coupang. I took a long in a a weak environment, which was just not the right move. So that was one that should have been avoided um, or I should have changed my time horizon on that trade. I knew I was going to get a bounce, so stick with it longer and then I could take profits probably this week. Um, other than that, though, I was pretty happy with my debit spreads. I think I had good picks. I think I had good uh, trade management and expectations for the stock and they generally ended up producing. On the day trading side, I also had uh, some pretty decent picks. The only one I didn't like that much was DFS long and Qualcomm short. Those really weren't the best picks for me and they didn't have great entries and I went one on one on those. So that's one that also could have been avoided. Um, the spot day trade long, that's the only one where I'm not too mad that I took the L on that. It was learning when to apply the time stop on a trade like that. And now I know going forward. And, and if you think about it too, if I took spot day trade on the 23rd, right? And it didn't produce. If you if remember that spot chart, and you go back to the video and see it. When I took DLTR short, it was a very similar setup and it didn't produce. And because I took the L from spot, I knew 
I, I use that experience and I use that learning to actually avoid the L on DLTR as a day trade short. So that's why I think I'm okay with taking that L because I actually took something away from that. That was an important learning part of it. Um, so on all of my on all of my four losses, I'm okay with one of them. The other two, the other four, just either I missed something in the market or I um, didn't have the best entry point. So I would have taken out, I would have lost on two wins, but I, I would have avoided four losses had I not given uh, those picks based on my bias. And that is a pretty good setup. Okay, so that is everything for the April uh, day trading video. Um, I was contemplating looking at just what we had what we had in March because we had some put credit spreads that we closed. But uh, it would probably make this video a little bit too long. <laughs> but I did go over that. And what I will say personally is that um, I took some losses on, the, on some put credit spreads over here and some swing swing longs because I didn't have a clear market plan of when to get out. So the next time that we get this long rally, we get this bearish candle, I know how I'm gonna exit uh, those trades that I am in. All right, so um, thanks everyone for listening. I, um, you know, if you have listened to the whole video, I hope you found it helpful or informative. Again, right, I'm still learning all this stuff. Making this video helps me understand where I made the mistake. And I'm not doing a lot of analysis before this video. I'm just making sure I have the structure set up, but all of this is my thoughts in real time. And that structure of setup, entry, what happened, and then exit, that is the criteria for how I'm evaluating those trades and I and how I know that, um, you know, where the mistake is happening and where I can avoid it for the future. Key takeaway from April is, Good job on my debit spreads. Good job on my day trades, and good job on um, my earnings time spreads. There was maybe a few trades, maybe three or four trades that could have been better in terms of the market context, and maybe two or three trades where I didn't have the best setup or entry that I probably could have avoided. So um, I think I'm pretty happy with two thirds of my trades, and I'm. I'm like not the happiest with maybe about a third of the picks I gave. So let's see if we can change that for next time. All right. Um, I will see everyone on Monday's video. Thanks for listening.